Hello and welcome to the next episode of The Future of Trucking, where today we're going to be talking about infrastructure and what it takes to recharge or refuel electric semi-trucks. So for any of you who are new to the story, when fleets are making their buying decisions of what trucks work for them, they're going to look at cost, infrastructure, and emissions of what these vehicles produce. And what we've heard from fleets is infrastructure is honestly the most difficult part to solve. So in today's episode, we're gonna talk about where infrastructure is today and where it's gonna head in the future. So to start today, you know, as we think about electric plug-in trucks, hydrogen fuel cell trucks, and then electric range extender, renewable natural gas or nat gas trucks, there is infrastructure built out on all, all three of these, but in two, we're at the infancy, and at one, we're already established. So with plug-in trucks, with PASCAR, there are thousands of stations out there, but for trucks, there are less than five stations. Same sort of story with hydrogen. For PASCAR, there are about 40 stations out there, but for semi-trucks, there's only three. And then you look at renewable natural gas, and just for the semi-truck market, you've got about 700 public stations already out there. And one of the questions we often get asked is, well, why is this infrastructure built out? And so about a decade ago, there was a push in the trucking market to move to natural gas fueled vehicles. Unfortunately, at that time, the technology of the engines was still at its infancy and it had reliability issues and these vehicles were underpowered. So the stations got built out, but there wasn't a mass adoption of these trucks. Fast forward to today, we can still leverage and utilize these stations. Now, the other aspect to look at is when we refer to 700 stations, that's actually the public stations that are, that are out there. There are also private stations or stations that are behind the fence at a warehouse or a distribution center. And that brings the total number of stations to about 1,300. So as a recap, natural gas, there's plenty of stations out there to, to utilize and, uh, and to deploy vehicles. But for hydrogen and for electric, we're really just at the start. So as we think about how are we going to deploy more vehicles, the first things, and, and deploy more stations, the first things we need to think about is, well, how does the fuel actually get to the station in order to, to charge or refuel the vehicle? So for electric, it's pretty simple. Uh, you tap into the grid and you often, most fleets often think like this will be an easy endeavor, uh, but what they often get faced with is the utility provider says, you know, you can only deploy three to five vehicles before you're gonna start overloading the grid and you actually need to start moving upstream in order to, you know, replace and add new transformers, uh, you know, upgrade your transmission lines of the electricity going into your warehouse. So while it might seem simple on the surface, there's actually a lot of complexity to get that much electricity. Um, to put an example to it, uh, one stat that really stuck with me was, if you were to deploy 50 electric semi-trucks on the grid, that's equivalent in electric consumption as the entire Empire State Building. So as you think about how many Empire State Buildings could we just <clears throat> go deploy and put on, the on our grid out there, and the answer is not many. It would be a very difficult endeavor. As you think about hydrogen, uh, it's, a, it's a system that's very similar to gasoline or diesel stations today where the fuel actually gets trucked into the station. And uh, this can be a, a pretty costly endeavor because you're, you're actually moving the fuel on a vehicle in order to get to the station. Um, but it's not, uh, it, it can be done um, versus when you look at natural gas, it's a very different uh, proposition, very similar to electric, where in electric you plug into the grid with natural gas, you're gonna plug into the pipelines. So you're able to pull that gas off of the natural gas infrastructure that's out there, which uh, you know, there are pipelines all across the country. And then that fuel is able to be compressed locally and be able to be used to refuel a truck. So now that you know how the fuel actually gets to the stations, the next thing to consider is, well, what density of stations do we truly need out there in order to support these vehicles? And the answer to that question really comes down to the range of the trucks. So with electric plug-in trucks, we assume you get about 200 miles of range. With hydrogen, you get about 500 miles of range versus with natural gas, you get about 1,000 miles of range. So when you think about having to deploy stations, you know, if you had uh, you know, a run that was 1,000 miles, you would only need one station in order to accomplish that. Versus with electric plug-in, you're going to need five stations along that route in order to make the same delivery of goods happen. So from that standpoint, we see the industries at today that 
there's plenty of natural gas stations to get started to, to have true over the road trucking versus for electric and hydrogen, you're gonna be confined to very uh, localized type deliveries, which we'll chat about in a little while here. And then, uh, you know, the other thing to consider is what does it take to make new stations? Uh, and how long does it take? So what we've seen is for electric plug-in, for small deployments, you know, low number of trucks, you're talking about a year to do so. For larger deployments, it's a few years. And the reason being is that upgrade to the grid needs to happen. For hydrogen, uh, it takes about two to three years to build out a station. And then for natural gas, it takes about a year to build out a new station as well. So when you think about how fast are we going to be able to adopt these trucks, I actually think it's gonna come down to, well, how long is it gonna to take to build out the infrastructure in order to support the fueling of these vehicles? The other big driver for fleets when they're thinking of what trucks they're gonna adopt is what's the cost. And we're gonna hold this for another episode, but just at a high level, you know, diesel is around $5 a gallon, hydrogen's around 10, grid electricity is around five as well, and then renewable natural gas and natural gas is about a dollar per gallon. So this will obviously uh, be a consideration for the fleets when they're thinking about putting in stations, but uh, we wanted to bring it forward in this episode so that you can get a sense of what does it cost to run these trucks. So as we think about these stations that are already out there or the ones to be built out, uh, we wanted to share some of the realities of what we're hearing behind you know, what it takes to adopt these. So to start with electric, uh, the, the biggest thing is the time it takes to recharge a vehicle. And so when you think about you know, our examples we've used today have been 105 minute recharge times to get 200 miles of range. Uh, that would mean you're using around a 350 kilowatt charger. The problem is, is that when, when fleets go deploy these stations, go build out the stations, if you plug in a lot of trucks into the grid, the problem is, is what's going to happen is you're going to derate all of the vehicles and give them all an equal charge. And so what that means is your time to recharge the truck is actually going to go up. This is the same issue that's happening in passenger cars, and you're seeing this at, uh, at charging stations already happening today. Uh, the other issue that we've seen is whether you're in really cold environments or really hot environments, that's also going to fluctuate how long it takes to charge up the vehicle. So now to look at hydrogen. Uh, we're very much at the infancy, but there have been some studies that have come out of the existing pass car stations out there. And what they found was for the first thousand refuels of trucks, one out of every 20 had an issue. Now, these issues varied. Some of them were around, you know, the compressors couldn't keep up with the refueling rates of the vehicle. Um, another one that was kind of funny was they found that the actual fueling nozzles were getting frozen to the, the car. Uh, and this is because there's such a pressure delta when you're fueling up, uh, you know, you're trying to fuel the vehicle up to 7,000 PSI that the physical nozzle would get stuck to the car. So not only would you have 15 minutes to refuel, then you need to wait till the nozzle thawed and you can then pull away or uh, remove the nozzle from the vehicle. Um, they did get to a point where they found that after about 10,000 fuelings uh, at the station, it was one in every 50 uh, vehicles had an issue. So it getting better, but once again, that means that a trucking fleet will have issues every single day uh, with fueling these trucks. So still very much at the infancy. Then you look at natural gas. It's kind of a different story where a lot of the bugs and hurdles have already been worked through at the stations. And we're at a point where we're starting to decommission or, um, or close down some of the older stations, specifically some of the small stations, and really replace them with more mega stations, ones that have you know, more refueling uh, bays. They also um, have higher uh, com or big, larger compressors so that you can fuel up the vehicles quicker. So we're more at a, a stage where we're improving what's already out there as opposed to trying to build from scratch. So now that you have all the details behind, you know, what stations are out there, what it takes to build more of them, and what realities there are behind stations. The question is, well, how, are, how is the industry going to adopt these? So for BEV plug-in, our philosophy is short haul, final mile, where you have chargers at a warehouse, the truck goes out, drives one to 200 miles a day, comes back at night, can recharge overnight while the driver's sleeping. That's where BEV works. For hydrogen, it's often considered an over the road solution, but to, the reality is to start, it's going to be more regional type applications where once again, because of infrastructure, you're gonna come back to the same location in order to charge up or refuel that vehicle. 
for natural gas, it is truly already at a point where it is ready for over the road long haul trucking. You don't need to be dependent on just one station. You can utilize various stations across the country. You can go up to a thousand miles in between refuels. So this is truly designed already as a over the road solution. So that's where the industry is at. Infrastructure is by far going to be the most difficult thing uh, in terms of adopting electri electrified vehicles. Uh, we're at a point today, natural gas is ready, BEV plug-in and hydrogen are kind of at their infancy, uh, but a lot of effort is going towards them. Uh, but our push is let's start utilizing what's already there today and then evolve as we go into the future. Thanks for watching.